in a place like that. And we're like, okay, we love our kids and we're the parents. But my thought was, why then is it okay for the children who do live in that neighborhood to live in a neighborhood like that? That's the question. If we don't want our kids moving there, then maybe we need to also consider the kids that are living there. But when we lived in Waukegan, which was a bunch of churches ago, we did buy a house in a neighborhood where we were the only white family for a for several block radius. And there were times when we did hear a gunshot every once in a while. And we had to dig, dig a discarded marijuana bud from our toddler, Samantha, a couple of times too, that was left on the street. It was the reality of it. Still, I actually felt super safe because my neighbors were always watching. They knew what was going on and they took care of each other. I never was afraid. We brought each other cookies. It was great. But sometimes we have to move into the neighborhood that is not ideal in order to contribute there, collaborate there. It wasn't always so dichotomous. The gap is rapidly increasing. Families are increasingly moving to neighborhoods where there are others like them, economically speaking. The school districts are better, etc., And that produces even greater imbalances. I'm not trying to say that y'all need to move, literally. What I am saying is that we can contribute to pray and to ask God to show us how to be like Jesus who did, according to John um, 1, 14, and this is the message version, the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one-of-a-kind glory, like father, like son, generous, inside and out, true from start to finish. And this is the very God that lives inside of us. How do we move into the spaces of those to whom we are called to disciple? What does it mean for us to do that? What might that look like? In two weeks, you're going to have a guest preacher um, who will give you some other options to pray over and consider. And I urge you to come and to listen and to come with open hearts and minds. Asking the Holy Spirit, come to church, asking the Holy Spirit, please show me what you have to say. Center on Jesus. We the people in this country, but we the people of God, are called to form a more perfect union. I mentioned this at the um, DEC 4th of July service on Thursday. We know a profound freedom. Free to be who we are most truly, bearers of God's very image, each unique, uniquely expressing God's image in a way like no one else. And together, we express God's image more fully. Imagine the impact for goodness and generosity and righteousness and love we might all make. Each of us, every one of us, if we walk out of this space, out of this church, in that powerful freedom. Imagine the effect we might have if we walk the streets of Duran today or in the neighborhoods you go, at the lake or wherever, with a presence filled with all confidence that we belong. We belong to God, we belong to each other, we belong to the people of Durham. And if we walk out today and go out to lunch or barbecue with friends and family, if we open our eyes and our hearts and move in a spirit of prayer asking, Holy Trinity, shower peace and love and joy over those teenage boys over there, 
or gracious God, pour your graces and presence over that young family here. Will not the gates of heaven be flung open at our call? But not only that, I have found that when I begin to actively pray about a matter, my heart is changed too. And usually it means God opens my eyes to see, to see a way that I might be a part of making things right in this space. So yeah, if you pray, God might be asking you to be a part of that, to do something about it. Do you have the courage to do that? It absolutely requires trust. You have to believe that it matters. You have to believe there is a God, and you must trust that the very Spirit of God dwells within you with power and mercy and is equipping you to be all that God has already created you to be. It doesn't require faith to merely say, yes, I know I'm made in God's image and the Spirit gives me strength. Saying so is only a recitation. Trust happens. It isn't a thing. It isn't a definition. It isn't the right answer on a multiple choice how to get into heaven quiz. Trust happens. It's an action. It is stepping out onto the water when Jesus calls you out. It matters. Seth Godin recently wrote, Independence sometimes seems easier than the long-term, disciplined, generous work of connection. But it's connection that enables us to add value. The math is simple. When, when people from different assets, needs, and views come together, they're able to produce more than they could ever do on their own. Trading goods, skills, and knowledge without friction creates a leap in productivity. It's shown in statistics. Research shows this. It might be easier to burn a bridge than it is to build one. But in the long run, bridges are what we need. And that's what we need right now. We need to figure out how to build, how to build what kind of bridge and to where make those connections. Jesus sent them where he himself intended to go, Luke tells us. The harvest is plentiful. We see kids running around, right? We know they're there. We see our teenagers, and my teenagers need more to be supported together, to grow together. But the laborers are few, and we're getting tired, right? Go, Jesus says, see, into the midst of wolves. So I know sometimes teenagers might seem like wolves. <laughs> Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals. Don't stop. Say peace to this house. Remain. The laborer deserves to be paid. Know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. And whoever rejects you, rejects me. Don't take it personally. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. They returned with joy. We come together in joy when we, when we are part of making things right in this world. Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us, they were saying. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven, and heaven is at hand. Heaven is near, and we are part of making things right. We come together to commune, right? We come together here now, and we commune. We eat Jesus' body, metaphorically speaking. Every molecule absorbed into us is a reminder of the nourishment of the Holy Spirit. 
the life, the consuming fire that burns within us, yet we are not <coughs> consumed. We publicly say, I trust God will do what God promised. I believe Jesus created the road for me, and the Spirit empowers me to walk on it. So let us remind one another. Let us collaborate together. Let's be creative, more creative, because we're doing this together to build each other up in that faith and rejoice that we are citizens of heaven. We are citizens of heaven. So let us celebrate that together in communion. And Clark, I forgot to ask you if you would, can you help me with this?